you know, these people are something else, y'all. You know, now they're trying to cite religious freedom as an excuse for their legalized crack house, also known as a safe injection site for those that do illegal drugs. So many of you already know this is just a location that your average run-of-the-mill opioid addict can go to and do their drugs in front of a medical professional. So if they overdose or anything happens, they can hit them up with some Narcan right there at the legalized crack house. You know, it's amazing how today's junkies have amnesty. If you call the police because they overdose, nobody goes to jail. They just get taken to the hospital and released from there. And they are given all kinds of support systems. There are even articles out here, ladies and gentlemen, with the police visiting them and making sure they're okay after an overdose. I don't recall that happening during the crack epidemic. Do any of you remember this? Let me know in the comment section. There was zero concern about the crack addict and them overdosing. Everybody went to jail, mass incarceration. That was the only thing that was offered to the community back then. I'm going to go ahead and play this article. Um, there's some audio to this article in NPR, and this came out April 13th, 2019. The U.S. Justice Department and a Philadelphia nonprofit are locked in a legal battle. The nonprofit is called Safe House. They want to open a facility where people can inject drugs under supervision. Prosecutors took legal action to try to block the site from opening. Now, Safe House has filed a countersuit against the Trump administration. Bobby Allen of Member Station WHYY reports. In Philadelphia, about three people a day die from drug overdoses. The severity of the problem is why public officials here are supporting opening a space for people to use illegal opioids under medical supervision. I'm a public health official whose job it is to prevent needless deaths. Philadelphia Health Commissioner Tom Farley. The evidence is clear that these facilities save lives, while at the same time serving as an entryway into drug treatment. The idea is to allow people to bring their own drugs, use them while being monitored by nurses and other medical staff, then offer access to treatment, legal counseling, housing, and other social services. Supervised injection sites have operated in Canada, Europe, and Australia, but one has never officially opened in the United States. U.S. Attorney for the Philadelphia area, Bill McSwain, wants to keep it that way. These are folks who have good intentions, but we think that this step of opening an injection site is a step that crosses the line. The folks McSwain is talking about are the members of Safe House, the nonprofit hoping to launch the country's first injection site this year. So McSwain and the Trump administration sued Safe House. They cite so-called crack house laws that make it a crime to own a property where drugs are being used. In response, Safe House has now assembled a team of a dozen pro bono lawyers and has countersued the government. Safe House lawyers say those laws from the 1980s were never meant to apply to a medical facility in the midst of a modern public health crisis. Lawyer Rhonda Goldfein is the vice president of Safe House. If we feel like this is in our power to make this happen or to go down trying, we owe it to all those who've lost. Advocates compare the injection site's life-saving potential to how syringe exchanges help reduce deaths during the AIDS epidemic. Officials in Massachusetts, New York, Colorado, and California have discussed similar injection site proposals, but because of the legal uncertainty, most of those efforts have stalled. The judge's ruling could reverberate around the country, either paving the way for injection sites or McSwain hopes permanently blocking them. You know, this is something that I think that people will be looking at as, in a sense, a test case that could have implications in, in other districts. Yet McSwain says there's a big difference between handing out clean needles and inviting people in a space to use their own drugs. In Philadelphia's Kensington neighborhood, opioid user Joe has a different perspective. We're only using Joe's first name since he uses illegal drugs. He's 35, from New Jersey, and used to sell mortgage loans for a living. Now he's in the throes of addiction. It's sad to see the people that are dying, man. I've had so many friends die and so many people that are on, on this that it's just they're not the same person. 
and I'm not the same person and we're not the same people. Joe is standing around discarded needles right across the street from a building Safe House is considering moving into. It's by a noisy train track platform. Joe says he almost died from an opioid overdose. He says if the injection site opens, he'd quickly become one of its clients. Using in front of the medical staff and knowing that someone's educated and trained and they're going to get the proper treatment if they need it. Versus, Joe says, using in abandoned buildings, alleyways, and fast food bathrooms, where often a fatal overdose can happen without anybody watching. For NPR News, I'm Bobby Allen in Philadelphia. Now, ladies and gentlemen, isn't it amazing? They have set up a site for people to do illicit drugs, powerful narcotics that kill people every day. But if you get caught with a little bit of weed, you are going to jail. They are still mass incarcerating black men over some damn weed. In the meantime, these opioid addicts can go clear across town with illegal drugs and go sit in front of someone and do their illegal drugs and they are safe. But you, primarily black man, are unsafe walking around with some weed, a teeny bit of weed. Just try to wrap your mind around that. But this is what America does. It does the same thing we have seen done in this rigged up system. So now these folks can go to a safe injection site and there is no cop that's going to arrest them. Please tell me what you think, ladies and gentlemen. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.